Hello and welcome to NCC Group's Crypto Pals Guided Tour. My name is Eli, I'll be your guide. In this video, we're going to be looking at Challenge 4 from Set 1. This is going to be a super easy one because it draws a lot on what we just did in Challenge 3. Um, we are going to be detecting single character XOR. We have a file full of possible ciphertexts. Only one of these is actually a ciphertext. The rest of them are random noise. And our challenge is to distinguish noise from encrypted signal. Now the way we're going to do this is super straightforward because we know how to crack single character XOR. So we're going to run our cracking uh, function on every single one of these lines and we're going to identify the line for which it actually works. <laughs> and that's, that's going to be our answer. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see I've added a data directory here containing that same data file. Same as before, challenge04.py. We'll go ahead and import the bones of our solution from challenge3 here. And we don't really need a name guard in this one because we're not going to be defining any functions, but I'm still going to put it there just for consistency. Let's go ahead and load our data file here. We'll process it using bytes.from hex inside of a list comprehension. And line.script here is necessary because by default, iterating over lines in a file is going to give us lines with trailing new lines attached. The new line symbol is going to be at the end of each of these strings. And so line.strip simply removes that so that we can be making sure we're not passing anything but hex characters to bytes.from hex. So now, our lines variable is going to be populated with uh, byte strings for every line of the input file, and we're going to go ahead and try them. We're going to create a, uh, just like in the last challenge, we're going to create a variable holding the current best scoring candidate plain text. This is going to start out with a score of infinity to guarantee that we're going to be able to replace it with something that actually looks good pretty quickly here. And for each of these lines, we'll do something like this where we generate a candidate guess and then replace our current best guess with it, if it only if it is better. This is pretty much what we did in challenge three. And then at the end here, we will just report the current best guess. Let's see if it works. Well, that, I'll be honest, that's not what I expected. <laughs> I forgot to uh, get the file name exactly right there. Apologies. Let's try this again. And there we go. We appear to have found our, our ciphertext. But this isn't really all that cool because it doesn't tell us where it is in the file or anything like that. So let's go ahead and uh, clean this up a little bit. And another thing you'll notice is that this takes a non-negligible amount of time, roughly half a second to complete. Um, so let's go ahead and do something we're going to be doing a lot in later challenges that take longer to run. We'll add a little progress meter here. This doesn't speed things up, but it does give us some reassurance that the program is still running, which is nice. There we go. And what this is, is uh, it essentially, so print takes a couple of arguments. It actually takes a lot of arguments, but a couple of them, you can specify something to end a print with. By default, it'll end with a new line, but you can make it end with whatever you want. So by pressing end equals dot, we basically are printing a dot and no new line after it. And then by default, standard out flushes whenever you print a new line. Um, flush meaning that all of the things you're actually writing to standard out get written to the terminal. And uh, so if you're not printing new lines, then these are not going to show up as soon as you print them. They're going to show up on a uh, slower schedule. And so you have to pass flush equals true to make them show up right away. So this is how you print out dots like we did here to basically show that something's working. You can think of this as like the command line's equivalent of one of those little spinning UI elements that you might see on a page that's loading. And um, the one thing you want to remember is to print a new line between these and whatever output you're reporting, because otherwise you get this thing where it's on the same line and it looks kind of bad. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll do a couple other things to touch up our output here. It will report, which <laughs> it thinks that ciphertext might be none because this type is optional. Yeah, we need to ignore that. Actually, will it work if we just say, now we're going to make sure the ciphertext isn't none up here. Will that fix it? Yes, it will. 
So let's just do that. So yeah, what we've done here is we've reported uh, which line in our input file actually contains the single character XOR ciphertext. And then we're going to go ahead and print the key in plain text as well after that. And let's see how this looks. Right on. And that's it. That's all there is to this challenge. Nice and easy. So yeah, this just goes to show the power of uh, setting each of these scripts up so that you can reuse its core elements from other scripts. That's something we're going to be doing a lot more in the challenges to come. So it definitely will pay dividends then, and it's paying dividends now. Well, that does it for challenge four. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.